You need to turn this up. It's the streets is talking. Where they come with real wishes. It's the streets is talking. Our prophet Chris West. It's the streets is talking. What up? Everybody, it's the streets is talking. From the north to the south. It's the streets is talking. And from the east to the west. It's the streets is talking. Pray unity to community. It's the streets is talking. What up? Everybody, it's the streets is talking. Welcome everyone to the Streets of Talking, the Art Prophet, Christopher 2X Show. Thank you all for joining us on another Sunday. We really appreciate it. And we've got a great uh, topic today that we're going to dig into here in a few moments. It's uh, the first part of our two-part Arthur series uh, that we're going to be doing uh, today on Sunday, August 23rd, and next Sunday, August the 30th. But today our, our uh, honored guest is a former uh, black female police officer. Her name is uh, Janet uh, A. Garnett. Uh, she has written a book and it's titled, Well, If You Don't Like It Here, Why Don't You Leave? Absolutely. First of all, sis, I want to uh, congratulate you on writing this book. And I, I know it takes a lot of courage, you know, to write a book like this and put it out there with, being, with you being a former police officer. Now, um, just my point and question to you is, I'm from a generation where, you know, um, we feel like when I say a generation is uh, born in 77, so I'm talking about 70s babies, 80s babies, even 90s babies that I'm representing, we think like F the police, so to speak. And we say that simply because, you know, all of our experiences, pretty much over 80% in the hood has been negative, and we feel that we've been profiled against. You know, I could, I have a handful of situations, you know, I can just think of right now where I actually felt like that, being an educated black man. So I just wanted to ask you, do you understand, with you being a fellow uh, former police officer, do you understand why we feel that way and why, given your experience? You're totally and absolutely justified in feeling that way when you have to, you, in fact, you've seen recently exactly what, you're, what exactly you're talking about with what just happened to Dr. Gates. Right, right. And not just him, you know, uh, being the news junkie that I am. In addition to being a retired police officer, I watched the Dateline primetime shows. There was a black police chief in Broward County, Florida, that they profiled on Dateline a few years ago. He was stopped by a white guy. He showed him his credentials, showed him he was a pol police chief. The guy was still questioning him and jacking him up. And soon, they, and the reason it made primetime, Dateline, whatever the show was, the police chief ended up getting pepper sprayed and arrested. Mm and trials and so on and they said that that police officer had a bad habit of stopping black folks anyway and he'd been admonished about that before right you saw with cynthia mckinney the one who was in congress right she was stopped while on the way to the white house to do a some to get to a function and she was stopped and harassed and jacked up too where it culminated in her finally i guess striking the guy with the telephone her cell phone and she got in trouble over that the whole problem is harassment, mm -hmm. and that's what it's about. And yes, you do have every right, and that's one of the reasons why I came out with this book to point that out. Now, given the amount of time we have, I want to point to this, and I will say it on national airwaves, this fake, false, phony drug war going on. Right, right. I mean, we Talk have this it. going on here because if they didn't want it here, it wouldn't mm. be here. All of the mm. hundreds mm. of thousands of harmless people 94% of whom are black and Hispanic, mm. who are currently serving ridiculously long prison sentences behind some stuff that can't even get in here without government assistance. And whoever, whoever wants to get on about that, that has been brought up by other white police officers in California, too, in recent years. And once again, if they wanted it stopped, it would be stopped. Every time our own homegrown leadership comes up with ways to get it stopped, and in drug use in their streets, they're the ones that the government comes against and stops themselves so that the drug use can continue. Mm. While honor students like uh, uh, the young girl who was finally released because Bill Clinton gave her a, a right. pardon, right. and the young 18-year-old girl carrying an envelope that she didn't know the uh, contents of, and she was sentenced to 15 years to life. What I point out in my book, this is not done to whites. Because you start arresting young white people on a regular basis like that behind no evidence or behind a little something. And you know, and, and the government knows exactly what would happen. They will turn this whole country into a Twin Towers building overnight without apology, without hesitation, and without delay. And that's exactly why they are not arrested to the degree that we are. Because we take it trying to be good citizens and trying to do the right thing. But they don't do it to them because they know that they're not going to put up with it. 
some of the oddest ones who called up Larry King have said that, you know, they said, Larry, all it would take would be one in four <coughs> white males to be incarcerated, and we, they, and the whole, and there would be a revolution that would make the a revolutionary war and the civil war combined look like a tea and crumpets party. Mm, these wow. things I mm. wanted to bring up wow. and point out so that something can be done about it, uh, so that all these people... Let me ask you this, Janet. We've got yes. about a little, right. uh, about two minutes or less in, uh -huh. in this uh, segment right here. In Chapter 11 of your book, you talk about the Rodney King debacle. Could you just uh, comment on that uh, briefly? If it hadn't have been for this, that's one of the things I wanted to point out, too, because it would look like I'm saying, oh, white people, white people. I do not mean for it to look like that. All right. Thank you so much. My pleasure to be here. My name is Janet Garnett. I spent 14 years on the police department in Atlanta, Georgia, with the MARTA Police Department from September of 88 until March of 2002. And uh, before that, I was in the U.S. Army from uh, 78 until 84. And it was my great pleasure to just come from the radio show where Christopher 2X was kind enough to invite me on his show, The Streets Are Talking, where I met wonderful people who really felt me, made me feel very, very inspired and very hopeful about our uh, city's future leadership here. That's the main thing, our leaders, and that they continue to set the example and get our young people motivated with a sense of uh, belonging, community, responsibility, and respect for their fellows, too. The only reason that all of these murders would happen is because they don't respect their fellows and don't respect their life enough. And that's a very sad commentary, I think, nationally for our people and for what this nation has shown as far as its attitude toward, well, those people that have stayed in the oven too long. However, I do keep my hopes up. My book is called, well, if you don't like it here, why don't you leave? <laughs> Memoirs of a Black Female Police Officer by Janet A. Garnett. It's available on www.trafford.com slash 08-1190. And it's also available on www.amazon.com. This uh, book ends with an overview. <coughs> There's so much referred to historically and everything about our experience in this nation. Very quickly, one has to realize and observe this. There's been literally nothing left undone to us. It's like God and the devil had another Job-like bet mm. and see if we would break. And despite everything that's happened, still, if we were to see a little old white lady trip, fall, and hurt herself, we'd knock each other down, running over to make sure she was okay. We haven't lost it. Ooh. So therefore, mm. I think it's safe to say we've passed the test. And just like with uh, Job, all the things that we've been through, all the things that our other commentators have, kind of have pointed out that they've been through all the harassment and everything, just keep this thing in mind. The only reason anybody would ever hate you is because they want to be just like you. Wow. You need to turn this up. It's the streets is talking. Where they cover real wishes. It's the streets is talking. Our prophet Chris to West. It's the streets is talking. What up? Everybody, it's the streets is talking. From the north to the south. It's the streets is talking. From the east to the west. It's the streets is talking. Free unity to community. It's the streets is talking. What up? Everybody, it's the streets is talking. Hey, it's Tim Gerard, program director for uh, WGZB B96.5, WMJM Magic 101.3, uh, producer of the Streets Talking Radio Show on 96.5, and from the corner to the courthouse, both sides of justice on Magic 101.3. I'm the host of the Tim Gerard Radio Network. Uh, that's Monday through Saturday, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., and that's on Magic 101.3. And I got other things that I got, you know, going on here. Uh, but I want to uh, particularly recognize uh, what Janet Garnett did. Not only did she go through the, her military training, she went through uh, the MARTA police force, and she wrote about it. I, to understand how to use words in that kind of context and all the fighting she had to do just to get that published, you can see her determination. That's the kind of determination you need to show when you follow your dreams. All right? All right. So, yeah. You need to turn this up. It's the streets is talking. Where they come with real wishes. It's the streets is talking. Our prophet Chris to West. It's the streets is talking. What up? Everybody, it's the streets is talking. From the north to the south. It's the streets is talking. From the east to the west. It's the streets is talking. Free unity to community. It's the streets is talking. What up? Everybody, it's the streets is talking. It's the streets.